in the car with MPA and today's topic is regarding GH growth hormone and various ways to use it and how to get the best benefit out of it in my opinion and the safest way to use it and whatnot so a lot of different thought processes behind growth hormone and dosing protocols for muscle hypertrophy hyperplasia uh, fat loss etc obviously there's nothing etched in stone because growth hormone is, is is not fully even understood some of the mechanisms of why certain things happen with growth hormone okay so this is all my speculation and anecdotal experience re regarding growth hormone and with clients and myself so the growth hormone in my opinion is best ran in smaller doses in a higher frequency protocol okay for utmost lipolysis to increase fatty acid oxidation I would recommend hypothetically of course under prescription that people would utilize growth hormone in a lower dose protocol with a higher frequency so let's say your total dose that you're using is six IU's a day you would do two IU's three times a day you'd split it up that would be for utmost lipolysis utmost fatty acid oxidation Growth hormone is not even definitively, from what I, from what I know, understood about how it, how you drop body fat from it. But its mechanisms for lipolysis would be speculated through cyclic adenosine monophosphate or CAMP, and also hormone sensitive lipase, uh, HSL. So it's basically going to create insulin resistance which is is not always a good thing however I have seen some reports some research done on insulin resistance in peripheral tissues and that would actually be fat cells so insulin resistance in the fat cell is a great thing that is basically blocking nutrient uptake in the fat cell while it's showing glucose preservation or glycogen preservation in the muscle cell so growth hormone is causing a lipolytic effect so you're releasing fatty acids from subcutaneous areas because you you are best to use it oh, in, the, in the subcutaneous tissues in your stomach uh, there is a localized lipolytic effect there uh, and you will basically be liberating fatty acids for fuel okay and one thing that I have noticed with growth hormone usage whenever I was doing such things is that it made a traumatic difference in my muscle volume okay so it okay. <laughs> okay, so my <laughs> glycogen preservation and glycogen storage seemed to be increased while my fat, uh, subcutaneous fat tissues were being excreted dramatically. So you do get a recomping, reshaping, three-dimensional effect from growth hormone usage. And a lot of people will dose it in a fashion like infrequent bolus doses of six I use all at once or ten I use all at once. Now, here's the thing, guys that's going to cause a gigantic bolus surplus a huge blood level spike okay of gh and that'll transcend over to igf1 conversion in the liver and your igf1 will be really high now people think they're getting great gains from that in my opinion i think it's a waste of product because you are getting a bolus amount which elicits side effects such as water retention and some bloats you're going to get a little bit more bloated you're going to hands are going to feel more carpal tunnel syndromes uh it's just like with anything and I don't want to get too far off subject here, but even with testosterone, like hormone replacement therapy, you want to actually, if you can, microdose testosterone as much as you can throughout the week because you won't get such peaks and valleys. Whenever a doctor who's not that knowledgeable, like a general practitioner, they recommend testosterone replacement therapy, they want you to inject like once a week. And whenever you do that and you have this peak, that's when you actually need to use an aromatase inhibitor because you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a bigger conversion over to estrogen. But if you actually took the same total dose per week and we're doing subcutaneous and testosterone injections in the subcutaneous tissues every day, your blood level will be so stable that you wouldn't require an aromatase inhibitor like a Remedex, which is bad for your cholesterol and lipids. So like with growth hormone, if you microdose it throughout the day, your levels are stable, they're chronic, and you aren't gonna get the water retention and the carpal tunnel nearly as much as bolus doses that you read on forums 
uh, people using 10 IUs or 20 IUs every other day just post workout only. That's great, you're just getting more side effects. Just like with Sustanin, the four blend, four ester testosterone, people get bigger on Sustanin because it's hitting your body at different intervals with the esters and you're getting more side effects. Doesn't mean you're growing, it just means you're getting worse off in the blood pressure uh, department, cholesterol, all that stuff. So, the take home message, if all this makes sense to you guys, is that growth hormone, the lipolytic effects, are mediated through, from what I understand, uh, cyclic adenosine monophosphate, hormone sensitive lipase, and potentially causing insulin resistance in the fat cells and causing glucose uptake or preservation of glycogen in the muscle cells. When I used it, I wasn't, people, people thought I was using a bunch of sight enhancing oil, whatnot, but my delts in my arms blew up immensely and I, it had a really good three dimensional effect on my physique personally. And that is what I'm gonna say right now about growth hormone and, and my opinion on it.